Welcome to Lessons That Last, where a researcher and a teacher talk about what it means to make a lasting impact on students' lives. They unpack the stories former students shared about their memorable teachers and discuss how we can all make a greater impact on the people in our lives. Here's Julie and Laura. Hello, and welcome to the Lessons That Last podcast. I'm Julie Hassan, professor, researcher, and big fan of educators everywhere, especially now at the end of the year. And with me is my always enthusiastic but end of the year exhausted co-host, Laura Estes Swilly. I am an educator, a writer, and um, looking forward to June. It's almost here. Yeah. We're so close. And it's the reason we picked this story today, because this is the sweetest end of the year story. But as we prepared for this episode, I was thinking just two weeks ago, we talked about memorable moments for students often being moments that are unplanned, spontaneous, just kind of happen in the moment. And this story is a bit different because this was a plan, like an event that clearly had been well-planned. It was a big celebration for the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about all the end of the years that I've celebrated and just all the, the sort of big events in life. So I'm wondering, Laura, what was one memorable planned event in your life? Where I was not the one necessarily planning it, right? So not my teacher life, but my life life. Either way, wide open question. (sighs) I think probably, I don't know, there've been so many, like you don't, you don't get to be as old as we are and not have a lot of really special memories. Um, But probably the most recent would be my 50th birthday. So I turned 50 and I was feeling some kind of way as you do when you turn 50. And um, my family determined that we were going to have this huge celebration. And my husband who, I think, I think he will admit um, has struggled in the gift giving area. My love language is, is gift and his love language is not gift. And um, <laughs> so he's had a learning curve and he did this amazing thing where he bought me a gift per decade. And so for the five days leading up to my actual birthday, I had a gift every morning and they were so thoughtful and they were everything I could have wanted as a gift for that 50th birthday coming. And there was a beautiful dinner. There was a family dinner. And then my, my family went on a cruise to celebrate it. Like it was the most celebrated birthday of all time for me. And a lot of people's efforts went into making that happen to um, create something beautiful for me. And I just felt so loved and so special. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Because so often the big planned events are full of really intense emotions. Yes. Um, and lots of stress. And right. expe- expectations, like especially yeah. something like a 50th birthday. If you have expectations and somehow what you expect is different, maybe not in a good way, then what right. happens That makes the event so hard. It does. It does. And so for me, the only part of that birthday I was part of planning was the cruise, right? We all had to get together and make that plan together and prepare together. Um, But everything else was not in my hands. And so I really didn't have expectations and I didn't know what to expect. And I think that's why it was so perfect versus the things you do plan. Like, let's say our weddings, a lot went into that, a lot of effort, a lot of time, some sleepless moments, right? And so um, it's different versus someone planning everything for you. Yes, I think so. But I think what you said is key. And I've been trying to practice letting go of all expectations Mm -hmm. about anything because it just seems like a recipe for frustration or Mm -hmm. disappointment or feeling some kind of way. (laughs) Yes, it's the disappointment. 
I think it is. Um, I've got the new book launching in a couple of weeks, and I've been practicing just having no expectations, right? And being down for whatever comes. And I think for us as teachers, even it's a good as humans, it's a good practice to just let go of mm -hmm. any preconceived notions or expectations. And I was thinking about the fact that I practiced that really hard when our sweet Kaylin, my daughter Kaylin, got married a couple of summers ago. Yeah. And I decided I was just going to be like fully present and enjoy the night and whatever the night brought and not picture in my head what it was going to be before the event happened. And it... Yeah. I couldn't have pictured it any more beautiful than it was. Anyway, you know, she got you were there. She got married on the mountain yeah, and on perfect. a beautiful sunny evening, and it was just lovely. And I'm so glad I went into it totally open minded. Like whatever the you, the two of them are so spontaneous anyway, Kaylin and Jake. That it was <laughs> right hard, hard to know how it was going to go down. And it was so sweet and in so many ways, spontaneous. So well, that's what I, I was thinking it. when you were saying, when you were talking about her wedding and not having a, a picture, I was thinking, how could you have had a picture? You, you could not have projected what this wedding was going to look like or how it was going to feel because it was so uniquely them. And, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't have expectations going into it. I just knew that it would be perfect because it would be their perfect. Right. But what that looks like, I have no, I had no idea. Now I know what their perfect looks like and what it feels like. I get that vibe a hundred percent about them, but you could never have imagined exactly what they created. Right. And the venue and, you know, here, in the mountains in the summer rain is a little sporadic and so we worried there might be rain and then we just decided if we had a plan b if there's rain you know, we, right. knew, we knew what the plan was and it would have been lovely anyway so i guess having a plan is a good thing but then finding a way to just let go of those preconceived ideas and expectations and try to be really in the moment enjoying the moment, trying to, was it Jim and Pam who got married on the office? Yes. And they were, they would take the little pictures in their mind. They would make the little click, click, click and click. take a mental picture. Yeah. That kind of sweet presence is what and I've been practicing. I struggle with that a lot, even though my mother pretty much preached to me most of my, probably from the teens on, um, having no expectations means never being disappointed, means not being hurt by someone letting you down. Um, and I, I practice that. I work on that. But when I'm in charge of something, I really, really need it to be perfect. And when it's not perfect, even one little flaw just kind of causes me some pain. And I think that's something that I could work on letting go of is once it's, it's planned, it is going to take on its own life. It is going to become whatever it is. And um, it's okay to let go of that. Oh, I love that. And how helpful is that for a lesson plan, yes. <laughs> for an event that you plan, for any kind of moment that you really want to go well to let go to say okay I prepared the best I could and right. now I'm going to let go of any expectations and just dance with whatever this brings yeah and you know I always say in in my own life and to the kids in my life and to the the students in my life um I always tell the truth like I don't lie because once you start lying, then you wonder, well, how would it have happened if I had told the truth? What if I would have gone the other way? If you always live honestly, then it can't go the other way. There is only one way, right? And so it's the same idea if I could make those connections and not have to have everything perfect, but have everything authentic, I would probably be really a, a lot less stressed at times. Same. 
you know, can relate to that. So we could all work on that. And I know every teacher uh, could work on that a little bit because we do want to be so highly in control of how our students are learning and the experience our students are having. And we want to protect them from some things while we open up the world in other ways. And um, we can't control all of that for them and on their behalf. It, we just have to do our best and then play the game as it as it's handed out. Yes. And this story, as we prepared for this conversation, I was thinking about a teacher and then a principal who worked with elementary age kids and having my own kids leave fifth grade at the end of a year from elementary schools they had been at, you know, their whole school career and then transition to middle school on a different campus. And all of the emotions that come with that. Um, there's so many big emotions, mixed emotions. They're excited. They're scared. They're sad. <laughs> right. And as teachers and, and people who have seen them grow since kindergarten, we have those same mixed emotions. We're proud of them. We're, we've built this community and now we're letting them all go but this teacher found such a, a beautiful, joyful way and memorable mm -hmm. way yeah. to, to celebrate that transition. So um, this is Savannah's story about her fifth grade teacher, Mr. Edwards. Laura, will you share the story with us? I sure will. In Savannah's words... I loved every minute I spent in Mr. Edwards' class. I was not looking forward to the last day of school because I didn't want to leave him and move on to middle school. I was so surprised when I walked up to his classroom on that last day. There was a red carpet leading up to the door, and Mr. Edward was wearing a tuxedo. There was a large sign welcoming us to the Eddies, Mr. Edwards' special awards show. I'm not sure where he got a microphone, but he made a big speech before every award. We all received an Eddie, and our teacher explained why each student was deserving before presenting each award. My Eddie is still prominently displayed on my shelf. It remains my favorite of all my awards and accolades. And that day in Mr. Edwards' class remains a favorite memory. What began as a sad day for me, a day of goodbyes, became a day of celebration. Mr. Edward taught me that transitions are part of life and a chance to reflect on what we have learned and achieved. Oh, Mr. Edwards and the Eddies. Yeah, so great. I love, I, I like, I remember the first time I read this, I just wanted to well, I wanted to do two things. One, be in that class, but then also be so thoughtful and so profound for students. Yes, it was such an intentional event. And clearly, you know, he knew his kids well by the end of the year. He gave a speech and a special award that I'm sure highlighted their strengths and their growth and something about them. And I just love the grace with which he handled this goodbye. Mm -hmm. And goodbyes, goodbyes are hard. Oh, I'm not good at goodbyes. So hard. Um, we just said goodbye at my school to the seniors. Mm -hmm. They had their last day and it's kind of built in for graduating, right? That the, the closure um, but they have a senior breakfast and then we had a clap out and they watched senior video. And of course, graduation is coming. And those are our very special and uh, highly orchestrated planned days. And each one, I think, lets them let go of some of those feelings. It's almost like where you let a little bit of air out of a balloon. You don't have to do it all at once on right. graduation day. Um, that I, I watched them and I said, oh, they did a senior sunset as well. They got mm -hmm. together, um, uh, oh, to watch the sunset, um, like on the Sweet. field at school. So good. And sometimes those moments, you know, that the kids sort of kids spontaneously do mm -hmm. are the most memorable for them. I remember us in high school, 
on that mm-hmm. last half day yes. went to Medard, Medard Park. Park. Went mm-hmm. to the park. And it was just all of these people you had known for so many years. And yeah. And everybody was going in a different direction after this. And it was just it was sweet. It wasn't even was, bitter sweet. It was just it sweet. was. It was sweet. I remember I was just telling the kids about that this week. Um partially because we came to this park and I remember heading there and feeling like we were going to drive off the edge of the earth. It was so far away in the middle of nowhere. And now I live right around the corner (laughs) from that park, uh, which they thought was funny, but also that we all went. And when I, and I said, you know, guys, when I say we all went, I don't mean like my friend group. I mean, half of our class, if not more was there, all the types of people, all the little friend groups, we all came together and it was such a special thing. And it was completely us. We did it. Right. I think you're right. That made a difference. There were no responsible adults. No. (laughs) No. Yet it was very chill and people just sort of spent time together and talked and I I love that we went to a fairly diverse high school and that all those different kinds of people were were there celebrating together and just enjoying that last day I agree I agree it was that was a a really really great memory to take as one of our last and I know graduation is is a memory and all the graduation parties we went to Um, But still, I think that day at the park is a standout memory for me. Yes, same. So I guess events like this are a combination of the planned and unplanned, Mm -hmm. you know, and even in a big event that's very carefully planned, maybe there are a few minutes of a spontaneous moment or something that just happens. Right. In the middle of all of, of the planning and the the rituals and all of the big things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe you, you plan the, the big pieces and then you let the little pieces fall into place naturally. Yeah. And you just, if you show up in our present, like we talked about, and not up in your head worrying about all the details and what the next thing is, then you can experience those moments. Yeah. You know, um, I I had a little experience this week and I thought about it when you asked me for an event. Um, Last year I was teaching ESOL and I had seven ESOL seniors graduating and you, you're very much a family in an ESOL class because it's a small class. And as they are learning a language and a culture, you kind of become like a spiritual mother, right? Or spiritual father, because they need you to teach Mm -hmm. them way outside the curriculum. Right. And so I had a party for seven students and I had gifts and we had cake and we, it was a big party. And so this year, um, our ESOL class kind of disbanded in a way. And so those juniors who last year were the guests at the party Mm-hmm. We're now not in ESOL anymore and in just regular English classes. And I said to our ESOL para, we have to do something to celebrate these kids because they were there last year. They know what we did and, and we struggled with it because just the way the schedule was this year, there wasn't any time because we had a whole class last year. Now we don't have a class. Um, and I, I felt bad the whole time we were putting together the, the small celebration we could, I felt like it wasn't enough because it didn't measure up. Um, and they cried over their little celebration. They felt so loved. They were so grateful. And in my head, it didn't measure up. And in their heads, it came out of nowhere and they felt totally celebrated and loved. And so I think that there's a big lesson in that somewhere, especially for me. Right. Right, Because in your head, I have to make this the same as it was before or or just as perfect. Every bit is good. Yes. Right. And all they cared about was 
that moment and being together and yep. celebrating how far they would come. That is right. such a good lesson. It, it is. It is. And that I just had that lesson and it's a lesson I needed to learn again and again and again. So feel free to remind me of that anytime. <laughs> yes. Same. Because in that moment, it, it wasn't about how perfect the party was. It was about the opportunity to celebrate and say goodbye. Right. And exactly. I'm going to work on getting better at goodbyes. I t I'm a goodbye avoider. Yes. I really am. Um, I remember when my principal, when I was a new AP and I had this principal I had worked for for years as a teacher and loved him, Scott Myers. So great. And on his last day, he was retiring and he was one of those principals that like definitely didn't retire before he retired. Like till the last minute he was all in. And at the end of that Friday before Christmas break, he was leaving and all I could do, I'd like, I'm going to say, look at me, I'm crying about it. It's been years. I'm going to say, see you Monday. And that's it. Right. So I did. I'm like, see you Monday. Shh, got out of there. And that, that's just sort of me. I'm a, not a good, good, buyer how about you i'm sorry i think i probably am a bit <laughs> okay i was getting a little misty with you so i closed my mic so i could sniffle um so i think i am probably a better good buyer than you um just our natures are a little different but i don't like prolonged and multiple step goodbyes. You don't and I want like the, the farewell tour. <laughs> no, no. And I, I maybe wouldn't even know that if I hadn't been a teacher. Right. So right. I'll have seniors on their last day at school who, or last day in class who are hugging me and telling me goodbye. And I'm saying, I'm, I'm going to see you at breakfast tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. We'll see you tomorrow. And then at breakfast, they want to do the goodbye, but I know I'm going to see them at graduation. So I can't do it three and four times. Right. I can do it a really good one time. Um, and so that's hard because I think for other people's process, they need multiple step goodbyes. They need an extended goodbye. Yes. Which is cultural in some ways, isn't it? <laughs> it, it might be cultural, but then it also might be um, generational age wise. Yeah. Um, right. Because they are processing something so big. Mm -hmm. It's a huge, I want to say in some ways, a, a huge loss in other ways, a huge change for those fifth graders, for those eighth graders and for those 12th graders. Um, and then two for college graduates, it's a huge time of change. And so maybe they need the multi-step goodbye to process something that is so big. I'm not sure. Yes, I can see that. So, yeah. yeah, maybe I should start engaging in all of the goodbyes. All of the goodbyes. <laughs> it's hard. It's it very is. Hard. It is. Goodbyes are really hard. Mm -hmm. So I admire Mr. Edwards for doing it so intentionally and gracefully and making it a joyful thing. He took it by the horns. He said, this is coming, right? This goodbye is coming. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to control it and make it special instead of all of us just kind of, you know, being sad and looking at each other. Sadly, we're going to celebrate any, he, he really did something amazing for those kids. Here we have an adult who um, counts that Eddie as her most prized award in her life. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. And I love that sort of strategy. So maybe if with a goodbye, you can sort of bestow something mm -hmm. that people will use as a memory touch point, you know, yes. I mean, that's what that Eddie is, right? So maybe that's a great goodbye strategy. You know, what kind of little memento or touch point might we include in our goodbye that will make it fun and a little easier and still encapsulate that moment of yeah. change. Yeah. And if you go back to kind of where we started in this conversation that my love language is gifts, there's a natural touch point there. Yeah. You, you, we had a goodbye. It wasn't a real goodbye. I don't think we've ever had a real goodbye. Um, but we had a pretty big goodbye when you were moving and yes. you and Brian came over and, um, you were like, 
I don't know, leaving within the next couple of days and you saved one of your swans for me and handed me your favorite swan. And that's, that's an important piece of that goodbye. It was, it was a t- only partly goodbye, but it's still a change, a huge change in a friendship when one person moves away. Um, so I have that in my living room every day and I look at it every day. Neat. It was the only good thing about COVID. We moved during COVID, so we didn't have to really say goodbye. Right. To very many people. <laughs> right. That's true. You and I met together like outside at a distance. Uh, we, we were, were we were good. But yeah, that was the one good COVID thing. There weren't no any goodbye tours. Goodbyes. Mm-hmm. No goodbye tours because that I could not have done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and even I'm thinking about graduation. Uh, that year in the goodbye tour, mm-hmm. we, uh, the teachers made a video. It was like a, a music video and everyone was assigned a certain part of a song and we had to record us singing that part of the song, but in our own unique way. And then the, our, uh, our TV productions person put it all together. So it was one video and that was a gift to the kids. And then we did a drive through where they just came and drove around the parking lot and different departments had a station and we waved at them and we threw beads at them and gave them little things. And, and, there, because there wasn't much else for them, right? It was a virtual graduation, yeah. but at least we had that event and that's an event that they got that nobody else gets ever. Hope, let, knock wood. Hopefully yes. we never have to do that again. And you found a way to still make it special, right? Not perfect, not the same, but special. But, it's, but it doesn't matter because you're, 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 you're ushering me into... It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be. Right. We have to be fully present and there for it. So unlike Bon Jovi and their song, Never Say Goodbye, which <laughs> well, that was our prom theme. was our senior prom <laughs> song, we are going to embrace the goodbye. And we're going to get better at it. Yes. And we're going to do it with joy and with presence and in a way that celebrates what's to come and honors what's behind us and Mr. Edwards, such a good model for how to do that. The Eddies, the Eddies. I love it. I'm so grateful for this story and happy end of the year. I know many of you are, are challenged with some goodbyes and transitions and all the mixed emotions and, and, and the exhaustion that comes with this time of year We appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us for this special story. And we will see you again next week. Have a great week, friends. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you will subscribe to the Lessons That Last podcast wherever you listen. Give us a rating too, which will help other listeners find us. And don't forget to visit chalkandchances.com for more stories. You can also find more information on Julie's research in books. While you're there, take the quiz to find out what kind of memorable teacher you are. I took it and was surprised by what I found. I think you'll find good food for thought. Let us know about your quiz results. We hope you will meet us here each week and bring a friend to share the conversation.